What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G that you might not know about. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to disable the Google feed. Now, in case you don't know what it is, the Google feed is basically this little news feed thing right here. I personally never use it, so if you're like me and you don't wanna use it, I'm gonna show you how you can get rid of it. So what you're gonna do is press and hold your finger on any blank spot on the home screen, and keep in mind it has to be a blank spot. If you hit like a widget or something, it's gonna go like this, which is not exactly what we want. So again, make sure it's a blank spot, so like this. From here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to settings, then from here, where it says add media page to home screen, as you can see by default it is on, but if you toggle it off, now if we go back to the home screen, it no longer pulls up. Now in addition to this, aside from just the Google feed, you can also use the Samsung news feed, so if you do want something there, but maybe you just want to use the Samsung one instead, that is an option. Now I'm going to show you a few different settings for the power key. Now, funny enough with this phone, the power key, I guess, technically really isn't a power key anymore because by default, when you press and hold this button, instead of actually going to the power menu, it's gonna open Bixby instead. So as you can see right here, now if you use Bixby, then I guess this can be a good thing, but I feel like a lot of people either prefer the Google Assistant or maybe don't use either of them. So if you do wanna use this button as an actual power key, what you can do is go to settings. From here, go to advanced features. Then from here, go to side key. And as you can see, we get a few different options. So again, press and hold by default, it is gonna open Bixby, but if you want, you can have it open the power menu instead. So if we do this, and now if you press and hold the side key, the power menu opens right up. Now another cool thing you can do with this button is quickly open the camera. So no matter what you're doing on your phone, if you double press this button, the camera is gonna open right up. So definitely a cool feature here. And in case you're wondering, it even works when you lock it. So definitely real cool. But if you want, you can also have it open a different app too. So from the side key menu, if you go to open app, hit the settings icon right here. As you can see, you can choose pretty much any app on your phone. So I'm gonna do, what am I gonna do? Snapchat. So now if I double press the power key, it's gonna open Snapchat instead. Now keep in mind, although the camera obviously will open when it's locked, if you try to do this with a different app, you are gonna have to unlock the phone. So if I go like this, it's not just gonna go right to Snapchat, you will have to unlock it. But all the same, definitely a cool option to have. Now I'm gonna show you how to show or hide the battery percentage on the status bar. So as you can see up here by default, the battery percentage is up here, which definitely can be nice. But if you wanna make it look a little bit more minimalistic, maybe you don't really need to see your battery life all the time, what you can do is go to settings. From here, go to battery and device care. So right here, then from here, go to battery. From the main battery menu, go to more battery settings. So right here. And as you can see, where it says show battery percentage, by default, this is gonna be on, but if you want, you can turn it off. And now the status bar looks a bit cleaner. And keep in mind, if you don't want it up here all the time, but you do still wanna check it from time to time, all you have to do is pull down the shade from the top like this. And it's gonna be here no matter why. Now I'm gonna show you how to get to your NFC settings. Now, in case you don't know, NFC is basically the main technology behind contactless mobile payment services. So if you like to use tap and pay, whether it's Samsung Pay, Google Pay, Amex Pay, all that kind of stuff, that is all connected to NFC. So to get to your NFC settings, go to settings. From here, go to connections. Then from this menu, go to NFC and contactless payments. So as you can see, it is on, and it will be by default, but if you wanna turn it off for whatever reason, you always can. And in addition to this, if you go to contactless payments, here you can change your payment service. So for example, if you wanna use Amex Pay or Samsung Pay if you have it set up, you can do that from here. Now I'm gonna show you a feature called Easy Mode. Now essentially, Easy Mode is gonna make things on your display a bit easier to see, so definitely a nice option to have. So to get to this, go to Settings. Then from here, go to Display. So right here. Then from this menu, go down and easy mode is right here. So turn it on. And essentially, this is what it looks like. So as you can see, things are a bit larger and it also gives you a high contrast keyboard. So if we open this, as you can see, this is pretty much what it looks like. So yeah, definitely a nice option to have if you wanna make things a bit easier to see. 
Now I'm going to show you how to change your refresh rate. Now this is actually in the same display menu, but in case you missed it, I'm going to go back one more time. So from the home screen, go to settings. From here, go to display. Then from here, go to motion smoothness. Now by default, with the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G, this phone does have a 120Hz refresh rate, but keep in mind, it's not actually going to be at 120Hz the whole time. It's really just for scrolling in system animations, so when you're using the phone in general, it's going to feel a bit more premium, but if you're watching a video for example, it's not actually going to be at 120Hz, so in general, in my experience, it doesn't really make an insane difference, but when you're just scrolling through your home screen or something like that, it does look and feel a bit nicer. Now that being said, one thing it can do is drain the battery a a little bit faster and honestly in my opinion it doesn't really make that much of a difference but if you really want to maximize your battery life you can change it to standard which is basically just going to be a normal 60 hertz display and when you do this be sure to hit apply and now the scrolling is pretty much back to normal which honestly some people might not even notice but i do think having the 120 hertz is kind of nice and again i personally feel like it doesn't really affect the battery that much but of course having the option to change it if you want is always nice now I'm going to show you a couple different features called labs. Now essentially what these are are like split screen, pop up view and stuff like that. They definitely make multitasking a bit easier, but I feel like a lot of people don't actually know about them. So to get to these features, as always, go to settings. From here, go to advanced features. Then from here, go to labs. So first of all, we got multi-window for all apps. This is basically going to unlock split screen for pretty much everything. Now, in my experience, I feel like there are really no apps that don't support it. But in case there are on your phone, this is essentially going to enable it for everything. Full screen and split screen view. So if you turn this on, when you go in split screen, it's going to hide the status bar and navigation bar. So it's going to give you a bit more of an immersive experience. So let's try that out real quick. To get to split screen, go to your recent apps. So like this. Then from here, tap on this icon. Hit open in split screen view. And now as you can see, we are in split screen. You can select pretty much any other app you want. So if I go like this, now of course, we got two apps open at once. And as you can see, with that full screen option on, the status bar and the navigation bar are hidden. But if we go like this, they come right back. And to get out of split screen and go back to normal, hit these dots right here, not this line, these dots, so the three dots right here. So go like this, and basically drag it all the way down or all the way up, so like this and we're back to normal. Now under this, we got swipe for pop-up view. So if we turn this on, pop-up view is basically gonna turn your app into a mini window. And with this feature on, to do this, grab the corner right here, go like this, and there we go. So definitely real cool here. And we got a few different buttons. So this right here is full screen. If we go like this, it's gonna give you more of a kind of immersive view. To go back, hit these dots, hit this right here, and now we're right back to where we were. If we hit this again, from here, you can go to split screen. So just like before. Then from here, you can go back to pretty much normal. Then from here, if you hit this one, now you can change the opacity. So you can make it kind of like transparent. You can also turn it into a little bubble. And this is gonna close it all together. And in case you're wondering, there is actually another way to get to pop-up view. To do this, go to your recent apps, press and hold on whatever app you wanna pop out. So like this, and just drop it in the middle and there we go. And then finally in this menu, we got swipe for split screen. So if we turn this on, to get to split screen, what you're gonna do is swipe up with two fingers, so like this. And that's also gonna take us to split screen. So definitely a lot of interesting things here and feel free to rewind this and play it again because I know that was a lot of information. And if you get stuck on anything, definitely just ask in the comments and I'll be glad to help you out. I know if this is like your first time using a phone like this, it can be kind of confusing. So definitely a lot to learn here. But I will say once you get the hang of it, the features can be really cool. Now I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to turn your screen on and off. Now these first two are on by default. So first of all, to turn off your screen, instead of just locking it like normal, what you can do is actually double press on the home screen. So like this, and there we go. And now to turn it back on, all you have to do is double tap it one more time, and it's back on. Now. I feel like this has limited usefulness because of course, if you touch like an app or a widget, it's not gonna do that. So when you do use this feature, make sure you're touching a blank spot on the home screen, otherwise it's not gonna work. In addition to this, there's another feature called lift to wake that's not on by default. And as the name suggests, basically this turns on your display as soon as you pick it up. So to activate it, go to settings. From here, go to advanced features. So right here. Then from here, go to motions and gestures. As you can see again, by default, lift to wake will not be on. But if you turn it on, 
If you lock the display, put the phone down and pick it back up, the display in theory will turn back on, but I will say the feature really doesn't work very well and I honestly don't really see much of a point to it. So if you want to use it, it's always there, but definitely keep that in mind too. Now I'm going to show you a feature called one-handed mode. This is basically going to shrink the display down and make the phone easier to use with one hand. Lots of devices have it now, but Samsung's in my opinion is really one of the best. So to get to this feature, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to advanced features. And from here, turn on one-handed mode. Once you do this, to get to it, swipe down from right above the home key, so like this. And as you can see, we are now in one-handed mode and it's basically like a mini phone. Definitely a nice feature to have. You can also switch sides and change the size. And you can move it up and down too. So like that. And to go back to normal, hit anywhere on the outside. And as you can see, we are right back. In addition to this, if we go to the options, you can also change it from a gesture to a button. If you have gesture navigation, this won't be an option. But since we do have button navigation right now, if we go here, now to get to one-handed mode, all you have to do is double tap the home button. So like this, and there we go. And then finally, the last thing I'm gonna show you is a feature called Dual Messenger. Essentially, what this is gonna do is make a copy of an eligible app, which is pretty much just Facebook Messenger or Snapchat, and that way you can log into two accounts at once. Now, in this day and age, with stuff like Instagram, for example, allowing you to use multiple accounts anyway, it's not really as useful as it once was, but definitely still a nice thing to know about. So to get to this feature, go to Settings. From here, go to Advanced Features. Then from here, Go to Dual Messenger right here. And as you can see, these are the apps you can use. And if you toggle this on, it'll make a copy right away. But this concludes my tips and tricks video for the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.